for the oh yeah next year it's 2023 yeah end of this year end of this year the campaign starts right by the time we get to this summer it's in full swing oh yeah they, they starting it up man so that guy's gonna be famous they're gonna make that guy famous mm-hmm. however, 2024 uh, is gonna be wild yeah how are republicans gonna you know recover from this they can't no. the republicans are dead um 2024 is gonna be a fucking um landslide for the democrats man um there's no there's no chance of a rubber it's too nice man yeah what are we gonna do get trump back and he's gonna have, like meet with silk now and and mm-hmm. pander to kanye to some more or some shit like yeah it's no it's, it's no it's no way in, it's no way in um for, for, for trump man. i'm a desantis man he's gonna come in and uh you yeah, know. it's gonna it's gonna be DeSantis versus somebody. And the question is who is that somebody? A jackboot for every hood. Listen, the Democrats are like this. They will support Biden. If you will Biden out there like weekend on Bernie's and shit, they'll vote for him. So you, you can't come like the, the Republicans are too nice. The Republicans would be like if if they had a candidate, if they had the wheel Trump out there like weekend that Bernie's Republicans be like, ah, he's not fit. <laughs> see, Democrats don't care about none of that shit. All they care about is the, the yeah. See, see, like the thing is, is like Republicans are coming from like a moral high ground point. Like yeah. shit about that shit. Mm-hmm. Like they don't care. They're gonna do whatever they have to do, whether it's some some real snake shit, Anybody, whether it's some but... fucked up shit. They don't care. If we can yeah. just get somebody other than like a, a decrepit eighty year old fucking rotting human being as a president, I'll be happy, honestly. Yeah. No, uh, not to say that they, you know, no Republican, like, you know, um no but Republican politician get- hasn't done anything like that, but like when they come out and actually compete against the other party, they don't they always do it from like some moral high ground. Yeah. They, they they don't know how to play dirty. Yeah, exactly. And they used to it didn't it wasn't always like that though. Um product it wasn't <laughs> no. always they were I'm aware I'd, I was say it, I'd say it always has been like that, at least at, at, at the congressional really? level. I thought the, the, the Democrats were the pussies when I like I grew up in the eighties, right? So you had the caucus, you had Walter Mondale, you know what I'm saying? Like the, but that was at the presidential level from the congressional level. The Democrats oh. have controlled Congress our whole lives. It's only yeah. been small blips of time that Republicans controlled the Congress. Democrats have been running the country behind the scenes our whole life. Also, um, like as you as you can see, even if you look back, like what you're talking about, like in your time, like the Democrats love to play stupid. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's um it's okay we'll see man yeah maybe they know what they're doing man they know what they're doing that's all i'm gonna say they know exactly what the fuck they're doing they definitely they definitely do we begin with breaking news a night of violence capping this mlk day in philadelphia (laughs) fucking shocking these are separate incidents which i think tells more than than the soul incident like a soul single incident even though a bad bunch of people get shot that means that one thing happened this is m- multiple and this is probably like a drop in the bucket these are probably the highlights you know what i'm saying and just some man is a savage <laughs> there's just not no other way to say it it's just, yeah i mean they're doing work Good thing you're lucky that they call themselves savages or you might be in trouble, but they, they refer to themselves as savages. So it's just what it is, man. I mean, they, they know. In Philadelphia, his message of peace and nonviolence fueling many events earlier today, but as soon as the sun began to set, gunshots. There have been at least four separate shootings in just three hours. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sheba Russell. A 12-year-old boy is one of the four victims. Two did not survive. Eddie Kadem live for us at police headquarters. And Eddie, police say there's one key piece of evidence missing in the case of the 12-year-old. Please fill us in on that and also how he's doing tonight. Well, please tell us, thankfully, that 12-year-old boy is in stable condition tonight. 
the family telling police that they heard a gunshot and realized that that 12 year old boy had been shot. When police got on scene, they quickly rushed him to the hospital. They say he was on the second floor in his bedroom. They haven't found a gun at the scene and they're holding the house as a crime scene at this point. Police say at least one shot was fired and it may have hit the boy in his arm and his torso. Police believe this was an accidental shooting and that there were several other young children inside the property at the time. Oh, good. So, no there story several here. Other yeah, that's what he, that's what he did. Accidental too. shooting. Yeah. Young children inside the property, several. And there were also adults, young adults inside the property, male as well as female. Yeah, 22 but year old. Since we can't find the gun and we can't find any other ballistic evidence, and we're not being told by the adults where the gun is. We're really not getting full cooperation. We have children, several children, no, inside man. the property, and you have a gun. That gun should be locked away somewhere safe where a child can't get a hold of it because it could be very tragic. It could have deadly consequences. The police say the child does not live in that home but visits family there frequently. Meanwhile, just before that incident, around 7.30, police got a call for multiple gunshots. That was over on the 6400 block of Eastwood Ave. When they got on scene, they found a man who had been in the bet, who was shot in the back. He was transported to the hospital. He's in tr critical condition. Now, minutes, minutes later, police were told two victims had been shot inside a car nearby on the 1700 block of Cotman Avenue. Now, police say a 46-year-old man was shot in the back of the head in the passenger seat of a vehicle that was moving. The police believe the driver is the victim's wife, and she was shot in the shoulder. The woman stopped at the gas station at Cotman in Glendale to help get to get help from police, and police brought the victim to the hospital. He's in critical condition, and he's going to have to go through surgery. And in that case, police say they believe both of those shootings may be tied to a car crash that turned into a road rage incident. And they're asking anyone that has more information on these shootings to come forward. Shiva, back there to you. Have there have been a number of road rage shootings over the last several days as yeah. well. Eddie, thank you. Did People are under the impression for the that gliders, you know, being the majority of the population, just must commit the majority of the gun crime in the United States. But I don't, you know, it doesn't seem to be any way possible that you know, people doing the most shootings in addition to the mass shootings, the murders of toddlers, the murders of young children, the murders of people in general. It still seems to be some people. It's not even close. They're no. putting up like 10 a night in every city. It's not even close. And the NYPD is searching for the suspect who assaulted and robbed an 80-year-old man inside a Brooklyn subway station. The NYPD says last Sunday around 7.30, this man went into the Euclid Ave station in East New York. And just outside the turnstile, he allegedly flashed a light and sprayed something into the elderly man's face. Investigators say he then put the... <laughs> <laughs> he, he mugging and thugging for sure. That... Lips poking outside the hoodie. Oh my God! Man. Oh my. When you can God. see the lips in profile, this is time to leave. Problematism, man. Jesus Christ! I mean, you run up on an old guy's flash of light in his face. He's like, "Oh my God, a young man!" And spray something <laughs> out. Like at least he didn't. I mean, at least he didn't punch the old guy in his fucking chin. And possibly kill him. So I mean, this is a this is a kind of gentler son, man. That swooped him, man. The victim in a chokehold and stole his wallet. Uh, spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke too soon. <laughs> Touched a light and sprayed something into the elderly man's face. Investigators say he then put the victim in a chokehold and stole his wallet <laughs> yeah. before punching him in the chest and taking off. The victim oh, is expected to recover people. with minor injuries. If you can help identify the suspect, hey, you see this. Let's spit. He just spit. Loogie's right. We might go get a swab, get a Q-tip and swab that spit, man. Get this son, man. I'm sure he's his DNA is on file somewhere, man. Shit, man. This is what I would. If I was dead lucky, I'm not the fucking. God, what a Oh, with minor injuries if you can help identify the suspect you see in this video you are asked to call police just unabashedly foul in every way yelling rapping spitting just oh, yeah. loving it every moment of it. i got an update for you guys 22 minutes ago there was a mass shooting another mass shooting so we gotta it's, it's happening it's, it's it's coming in they're coming in
We have more breaking news tonight out of Northeast Houston. Police are investigating a quadruple shooting. Thank you for joining us at 10. I'm Keith. My bad, a quadruple yeah, shooting. Yeah, uh, come on now. My bad. We have more breaking news tonight out of Northeast Houston. Police are investigating a quadruple shooting. Thank you for joining us at 10. I'm Keith Garvin. Good evening. I'm Daniela Guzman. Well, an investigation is happening at Lockwood Drive near Shreveport Boulevard, and that is where we find KPRC2 reporter Devin Clark. And Devin, what are police telling you tonight? Daniela, Keith, a lot of questions in this case. I can tell you that while it's unclear how many shots were fired, I personally counted at least 17 evidence markers that begin here in front of the Sun Food Store where you can see the front glass <laughs> shaft. Sun Food Store? Yes, yeah. No way. One of the <laughs> one remaining oasis is in the, the desert. Oh, my God. Listen. <laughs> the Matrix is real. It's showing us. Oh, Lord. My God. I would never go to that store. My God, I would never go to that store. How many shots were fired? I personally counted at least 17 evidence markers that begin here in front of the Sun Food Store, where you can see the front glass shattered by gunfire, and they continue all the way down this stretch of Lockwood Drive. A lot of questions, but there is some good news that we know. All four people who were struck were said to have sustained non-life-threatening injuries. Some poor Arabs that run this store, man. HPD's Major Assaults Division and their Northeast Division are investigating to piece the details together. We know that according to HPD, around 646, a call came in for the shooting. Officers were dispatched around 650 and were told that they got here in one minute. Officers say that they learned that the four victims were standing outside, three males, one female, when a black four-door truck with silver rims drove by. And it's believed that at least... Look at all the cameras, these goddamn... Sun Sandman got. Yeah, but if only the Sun Man gave a shit about being on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you <a> fly, <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe at least you could get him later on, but <laughs> that ain't no turn. They just don't care. It, 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 that just means they got more angles than CBS Sports. <laughs> uh, you just you just can't. They're going to get every angle of you getting smoked by some ordinary Sun Man <laughs> one night. And think about how much they pay for this because I, I was thinking that when the, when the story started, I was like, I was like, it's, it's awful desolate out in front of the sun store. But then I realized, yeah, that's because the cops are there. But during a normal time, it's a bunch of sun men milling around out here, you know what I'm saying? Just, just milling, you know, not doing nothing, just milling. And yeah, and they bring in, in their ops and their beef, everything comes to you wherever they're at started firing a male and female were transported to the hospital and two males were treated here at the scene we do not know how many shooters were in the vehicle we believe there were at least two because we have uh, casings that suggest at least two different firearms fired um, so we know that we have probably at least two suspects probably maybe three um, the vehicle continues southbound Based on the shell casings, HPD believes that a handgun and a rifle were used. It's not clear if the victims knew each other. And it's also not clear if they were targeted or if this was a random shooting. We do know that there is surveillance footage at the Sun Food Store that police are using to try to help piece this detail together. But as soon as we do learn more information, we will bring that to you. They're asking anyone out there with any information to give HPD a call or you can call Crime Stoppers anonymously at 713. Okay, so <sighs> my God, dude. there's a mammy somewhere talking about we ain't own nothing in our communities. Thank God, man. The, those sand yeah. sun men are the only people brave enough to to operate in war zones like that. It is, it is, it is. The Germans with Aldi, they looked at that. They're like nine, nine. nine. Yeah, them, them damn Koreans, though, they, they allowed them for that. Right, let's get to the latest developments in the uh, 